In this video, we're going to take a quadratic and find its characteristics algebraically. So here's our quadratic, minus 4x squared plus 10x plus 9, and we're going to find the following. We're going to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the domain and range, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. I will have a second video that will do them all with a graphing calculator, so that way we can do them both ways, but I'll do them in separate videos. So first, let's find the vertex. Now remember what the vertex is. It's the turning point of the parabola. If it opens upwards, it's at the bottom. If it opens downwards, it's at the top. And we have what I like to call the vertex formula, which is that x equals minus b over 2a. If you want to see where this comes from, look at the video on, create, on deriving the quadratic formula. So negative b over 2a is going to give us the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we have to identify b and a in our quadratic. Well, b is 10, a is negative 4. So to find the vertex, what we're going to do is apply this. So negative b over 2a, so negative 10 over 2 times negative 4 equals negative 10 over negative 8 or 5 fourths. Now a vertex has two coordinates. It's a point. The x coordinate is 5 fourths. The y coordinate we can find by plugging in our x coordinate to see what we get. Let's go ahead and use the calculator for this so we can see how it be put in. So negative 4 times 5 fourths squared plus 10 times 5 fourths plus 9. And I put something in wrong. I have one extra set of parentheses there. 15.25, or to put it in a fraction, you can use math fraction. 61 fourths or 15 and a quarter. So we'll we put that in fourths, we'll put this one in fourths. 61 fourths. So this is our vertex. 5 fourths comma 61 fourths. Next we have what's called the axis of symmetry. Now the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that makes our quadratic symmetric. In other words, if we were to flip it over that vertical line, it'd look exactly the same. Notice that it goes directly through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry is a vertical line, and its equation is just equal to the x-coordinate of our vertex. So it's the equation x equals 5 fourths. So once we found the vertex, we've already got the axis of symmetry. So not only does this help us find the vertex, it finds the axis of symmetry. Now we are asked to find the domain and range. Unless we're in some context, the domain of all quadratic functions is negative infinity to infinity. All real numbers will work for a quadratic. Now for the range. Notice that they turn around. So let's think about what our quadratic is going to look like. We know that we have a vertex at one, 1 and a quarter and 15 and a quarter. So somewhere up here. So the next question we ask ourselves is, does our quadratic open up or down? Remember, we look at the a to determine that, the coordinate of x, the coefficient of x squared. It's negative, so it'll open downwards. So our range is going to be from this y value down. And we found that y value as part of our vertex. So the range is going to be from negative infinity up to the y value of our vertex, which is 61 fourths. And we are going to want to include that. So we can always find our range from the y coordinate of our vertex. It's either going to be from the y-coordinate up, 
or from negative infinity up to our y coordinate depending on which way our parabola is opening. All you got to do again is look at the a value. Next thing is our x intercepts. Because our vertex was above the x axis and it opened downwards, we see that we have two of them. So let's see if we can do this algebraically. We want to find where negative 4x squared plus 10x plus 9 equals 0. Now we'll always try factoring first, but a fallback is always the quadratic formula. Let's see if we can get this thing to factor into two distinct factors. Let's, so, we have different ways we can split this up. 4 has, can be, negative 4x can be split into 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. Actually, let's go ahead and factor a negative out of that because it'll make it a little easier to deal with. So negative, because it won't affect what the zeros are. 4x squared minus 10x minus 9 equals 0. And now let's split it up into two factors. Again, now 4 can be split into 2 and 2, or 1 and 4. 9 can be split into 1 and 9, or 3 and 3. We need the version that's exactly 10 units apart. So, in looking at all the possible combinations, 4 times 3 is 12, 1 times 3 is 3. Those are 9 apart. That won't work. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. Because they have to have opposite signs. That won't work. And so 2 times 2, 2 times 9 is 18, 2 times 1 is 2. So we're not going to have a very easy time factoring this. So let's go ahead and apply the quadratic formula and see what we get for zeros. The quadratic formula is, as a reminder, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And for our problem, we can use either version. Let's go ahead and uh, use our one with a negative factored out. So 10 plus or minus square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 9 all over 2 times 4. So simplifying, we have 10 plus or minus the square root. Here we have 100 plus 4 times 4 is 16 times the negative 4 is negative 64, so plus 64. So 164 all over 8. Now, this thing is not a perfect square but it does have perfect squares in it. For instance, it's divisible by 4. If we divide it by 4, we get 41. Now in, in another video I showed how to simplify this, but we can pull a 4 out of the radical, so we get 10 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 41 all over 8. Now, divide it, now we can divide the top and bottom by a 2. Every term has to get divided by 2 so that's 5 plus or minus square root of 41 all over 8. And that's a nice simplified answer. So those are our two x-intercepts. The plus or minus accounts for both of them. Lastly, we're asked for the y-intercepts. So the x-intercepts we'll write as 5 plus or minus square root of 41 over 4, let's just say over 4, not 8, comma 0. The y-intercept is the output when the input is 0. This will be pretty easy to calculate from our original because if we put in 0 for x, all we get left is the 9, and there's our y-intercept. So, 
Sorry about the factoring. I, this is one I thought would factor, but it didn't. But we were able to use the quadratic formula to still find our x-intercepts.